How are we doing, guys? Good. 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 Uh, good practice today. Good energy. Uh, great weather out there. Nice fall weather. Sunny. A little breeze. So it was. Uh, it was a good day to be out there. And uh, it was a good practice. Good. Good energy. It felt like. A, it felt like. A championship game is on the way, which is is, is how we feel. Federico do anything today? Nope, Kyle won't do anything until later in the week. We'll, we'll test him out, you know, give him as much time as we can to, to recover, and then see ultimately what he can give us toward the end of the week. Kyle, what have you seen from Jamison that tells you he can handle the carry, all the workload so far? It's really just seeing him on game day. I think you know, every, any running back that carries the ball a significant amount of time during the game, during the week is where you see the recovery, and then ultimately you, you, you want to see him on game day and see if he's full speed and feel that you did what you should have done during the week. And, and there hasn't been a game yet where I didn't feel like he really had had everything that he has you know, on game day, and I think that'll be the same this week. Do you pull him back a little in practice then at this point of the year to, to let him recover or no? Uh, not really. Not really. They're, they're, none of the starters take all the reps in practice. You know, the quarterback is probably the one who's the closest to that. but. You know, he, he gets the reps he needs in practice, and we, we really haven't started the process of cutting him back just yet. I think the way the schedule is this year really helps him and, and is unique for our team in that it was kind of a four-game season, and now we're halfway through the second four-game season, then there'll be another break, <coughs> and we may do some things on, during the break to get him ready for the, you know, for the, the last four. But, you know, right now he's fine. A couple weeks ago, you said Al Page. You don't know if you were going to get him back. Is it still the same status, or is it's not? You know, Al's Al's not going to go this year. I thought I had said that. I apologize if I haven't. But we ultimately had to do surgery on Al, and and, uh, and he's going to be. You know, he'll be ready for spring, mm -hmm. but uh, but we won't see him again this year. Now, how was uh, how was Gary held up in terms of throwing? He only had like a dead arm for about two days, right in, in the summer, I guess, the end of the summer. Has he been good with that? I think every quarterback during training camp, especially the way it was with us, where we were competing, you know, I think every quarterback goes through something like that in training camp. But he he uh, he's been good all season, and really, you know, the the amount of throws and the and the workload has been excellent. And I think ultimately that's how a quarterback gets better. They, they have to do it, and, and that's why you talk to anybody who, who other than the option teams. Those quarterbacks take 80 to 90 percent of the reps, and that's just how it goes. So that's you know, that's the only way they can get better is to do it. Well, well Cal, what are you seeing from like Darius uh, so far, Hamilton? Darius has been a productive player since the very beginning, and I think now because of our D line situation, he is he's starting to take on more and more of the reps. You know, I think every week his reps have gone up just a little bit, and he's been able to handle that. You know, so you know, we're we're excited about about his career, and certainly more importantly, excited about what he can do for us this week. What, what, the, what about his, his, his size playing on the inside? Uh, you know, you probably could say that about most of our defensive front. You know, we're just, you know, okay. we're just not that big, you know, and it's never been the way we've recruited. We've never sacrificed speed for size. And, you know, ultimately I think Darius's frame will be, a, he'll be one of the bigger guys ultimately at the end of his career. But, you know, right now he's, he's playing on toughness and leverage and hand placement and, and technique and, and high motor, and he's doing a great job of it. What about Marcus Thompson? What's made him the right guy for that, I guess, left defensive end spot? I think Marcus this year really embraced that position and really made a conscious decision that he was going to become an expert. And it's not Marcus's fault that we've tried him at a number of different spots. We've tried him at linebacker and fullback and the open side. And we, you know, we've tried him in a lot of different places. That's not his fault. That's us not, you know, not finding the right place for him quick enough. You know, this position he's playing now appears to be the right spot for him. And, and he's embraced it, and he's done a great job with Coach Panigo so of kind of learning all the, the little details of that position. And certainly any time you can stay at one position, get all the reps, he's a physically gifted player, it always helps. Nick, you know, has, if Nick has to kick a Temple, how confident are you to handle that on the road? Oh, time? very. Yeah, very confident. I think Nick's done a good job. Well, um, Montel Harris has had two straight 100-yard games. What do you see? Are you seeing things that he had when he was the preseason ACC Player of the Year in 2011, BC's all-time leading rusher? What do you see in him as a running back that, that got him to that point? I think very similar to, to number 23 on our team. He is a guy that one-on-one -on -one is very difficult to get down, very difficult. He's, a, he's a, a very gifted runner in space, and that is you know, when you play, and their scheme creates those situations because they have an option element in their in their defense. So even as you're running to the ball, you may have certain players in your defense that aren't necessarily running to him. So you, you really got to swarm and, and you got to get people to to the tackles. You got to gang tackle them. Very difficult to get them one on one. And is it a big deal that he came from a pro style offense to go to this one? Because you know Dave ran a, a pro style there at BC. Yeah, is that a big transition for a running back? 
it, I think it would be if that was all they did. I think they have some elements of some pro-style run game in, in, in terms of what they do. That helps a little bit. And, I, you know, I think he's, he's a gifted runner. He's, he's certainly – I don't know that that transition would be easy for everybody, but certainly with his experience, it, it, must, it must have helped because it shows up on film. Got an, time for two more? As an offensive line guy, are you impressed by Steve's offensive line's physicality? Very impressed. Very impressed. They have big, strong, physical linemen. They play very hard. You know, they're very good at what they do. You know, they have multiple schemes in their system that they run, and they execute them. They put hats on the right people, and they're aggressive. I, I'm very impressed with what he's done down there. Coach, um, what is it? it seems like you guys come up with a big special teams problem every year. What is it that allows them to be able to do that? The only thing that allows you to come up with a big play is to play every play with tremendous effort because you never know ultimately which one is going to be the one. You don't know if it's going to be the second kickoff return of the game. You don't know if it's going to be the third punt block or the second PAT block. Or, you, know, you never know when it's going to come up. You just have to play with great effort all the time and then Sooner or later, if, if you do it well enough, you can capitalize on something and then one of those plays happens.